why don't we talk about um, GameStop closing a bunch of their stores? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you probably couldn't tell today, but I, I used to be a bit of a gamer, just like you, you kids. I feel and like you're <laughs> <right. laughs> I used to be quite the gamer myself. And, uh, you know, back then, especially like in high school, I'd be like, hmm, what are you guys, what, like with my friends, what do you guys want to do after school? Let's just go to GameStop and go look at the games because we were just a bunch of dorks and that's all we really <laughs> wanted to do. Um, They'd have so, that PlayStation on display. You could play like a demo or two. Oh, yes, yeah. oh, the exactly. Good, the good days of the in-store demos. Like, yes, like Rock Band, Guitar oh Hero. Okay, but then, but then they'd be Think broken the in like next two days. Oh, oh yeah. Oh well, now it'd be that would different. never fly now. Or, or, or somebody, <laughs> or somebody walked into the store after dipping their whole hand in honey and then went to play the Guitar Hero. Like, yeah. oh know? yeah, that's something that yeah, it's do. always the word Canada thing. thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's yes, maple yeah. syrup in Canada. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. maple, and we just that. carry maple syrup around, and then we just pour it on everything. That's like, what we oh, do. That's a, like a little that's a Guitar Hero display in public. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna get these controls all sticky. Yeah, you know? it's that's always, exactly what happens. It's always the worst when you're waiting to play the demo, and the kid in front of you is like some six year old that you oh know he picks his nose. Know about that, that he he probably didn't wash his hands in like four days. And you yep. question whether it's worth getting sick to play this demo. <laughs> and the answer is always yes. Yes, Yeah, it you is. still living, play that. Stuff like it, that. Living in now in like COVID times and everything, when I think back at stuff like that, it's oh. more gross yes. to think about it. You I know? don't think about it at all. And yeah. then I'm like, ew, why did I yeah. ever do that? Yeah. Um, like going to an arcade and playing Guitar Hero, disgusting. The amount of people who must have touched that oh stuff God. up without him getting wiped down. Disgusting. Yeah, like Sorry, go ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> going to eat something after playing that? Like, yeah. you know, like, watching like, not a clear in the world. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were in nicer times. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, so yeah, you know, the nostalgia that is GameStop. <laughs> Is not doing so well. They already weren't doing that well last year, I believe. Yeah. Uh, they like currently in this year. They're the second quarter. They've already made a net loss of a hundred, a hundred eleven million dollars, um, and their sales mm -hmm. are just going down, down, down. So they are looking to close about a hundred more stores than originally planned. And they are probably going to close almost five hundred stores globally this year. So I think I think like in total they've closed like almost five hundred to six hundred stores already. Yeah. Um. I mean, luckily their net sales are going up, but it's still like all all over revenue is just going down. Um. Stock going down four percent. And you know, I I think all they have to say, like Chief Financial Officer Jim Bell, all they have to say is, well, this will allow us to more efficiently and properly service our customers, but there's more to do. So it looks like he's just like. Boy. Yeah, GameStop's not doing so well. I think we're just going to close up the stores, mm -hmm. do the online thing. Maybe GameStop should look into doing some kind of subscription thing, too. Well, honestly, yeah. I don't know why any of those, like, I don't know why GameStop never thought of that. Like, <laughs> that would have been the smartest thing. Even if you see something like Game Pass, get on that. Go to Microsoft partner with them in some way add more that, value yeah. to the service right like it just makes like it, it just i don't understand what they're thinking but now i understand why reggie fizeme probably needed to get another <laughs> job at spin yeah. master based on this news <laughs> i yeah. mean i think for a while they thought they were going to live off their like funko pop sales apparel yeah. And, and their apparel. Well, they you, probably thought that would last. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, in the last like five years, I feel like GameStop um, or EB Games here in Canada mm. has gone through so many transitions in terms of how their stores look like, in terms of what yeah. products are being sold in the stores. Like they really have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> this, is, this is just like, it, it's. I feel like it's the beginning of the end. Um, yeah. I mean, th there's a reason that PlayStation and Xbox uh, have, or in Xbox's case, have already, but will be releasing all digital versions of their consoles. Yeah. There's a reason. It's because there are people out there who are at the point where it's like, why would I drive 15 to 20 minutes to mm -hmm. my local GameStop to pick up a physical copy of a game when I could sit down in my chair and buy it right now, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 
and yeah. and and just have it there living in my console i i don't have to get up and take the disc out and change my disc i don't have to worry about where i'm keeping my case there are people out there who love their their physical media like that people love their their blu-rays they love having the game disc and, and the actual physical copy I do enjoy that to an extent as well. Like if it's a game that I really like, it's cool to own the physical copy of it. But at the same time, you know, for instance, if um, if I'm getting like Destiny or if I'm getting the next Call of Duty, I'm just getting it digitally. I'm not. Right. I don't want to worry about that. I don't. Wanna, I don't need to keep friggin' fifteen Call of Duty cases from the last ten years. But I don't need that. You know, you need to worry about what you're going to delete next because the size it's, of these games are getting yeah. unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Like, <laughs> and, and so Kingdom Hearts, I am sorry, but you got to go this month. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Warzone as well. Warzone. Warzone. Is a huge example of that. Yeah. that game just keeps getting bigger. But like you, you add that on to some of the not so great practices behind the scenes that GameStop yeah. has been pushing. You look at when COVID was first hitting and and the the first kind of big wave was coming. What GameStop did? That was that, a that was a big that blow. Was a big that was, GameStop was that an was, essential was, business. Yeah, that's terrible. Gamers just terrible. Their games. Just, just terrible. Um, and so this is probably the beginning of the end. We'll we'll see how this whole situation progresses. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say that. I don't know. Like for people that are just working there and they're just yeah doing their job, I feel bad for them. I you do. know, the, for some of the people in the in in the offices and stuff like that losing their jobs because of this, I feel bad for them as well. And you know, you don't want to you don't want to actively be happy for that right right um but at the end of the day uh with the way that gaming is progressing and the way that people are obtaining their games this is just the the natural progression of it because of how many people are buying games digitally there is mm -hmm. less of a demand to go to these stores and buy physical copies and even so like i'm gonna trade in my ps4 for probably three dollars and a pack of gum <laughs> like it's just it's starting to get annoying that that that's a genuine meme that goes around with that company because it's literally how it is for them with the trading in um but th it, this is how it is it's it's unfortunate it sucks i feel bad for the people that are losing their jobs because of this yeah but that's just that's the way it's gonna go because of how do you uh, guys uh, think they could pivot for the positive? I, I think it's. I don't yeah, think they I, can. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. I, I think unless they leaned into something like a subscription service thing, like you're saying, you know, where it's like pay X amount a month and you can get a couple of games or something like that. Like, I don't know. I don't but know. then you have to figure cool. that there would be some sort of licensing with whoever oh, the publisher exactly. is. So exactly. it's like, is there even a point? Yeah. Well, and yeah, but I don't know. Is, and that's the thing, right? Like, if they were quick to the game with subscription services and figured a way to partner with Microsoft on that subscription service by adding yeah. value in a way, um, or figure out these licensing deals, because they already have relationships with all these publishers with um, selling exclusive figures or statues, apparel sure. at their yeah. stores for mm -hmm. specific games, right? So I mm -hmm. feel like there is a way that they could have done it there. At this point, I don't think it's worth them um, paying as much money would be needed to get that kicked off the ground um, to go into it now because they're pro they're losing so much money at this point. It's about keeping jobs for the people that are employed or mm -hmm. closing or not going bankrupt. I, I mm -hmm. honestly think it's like not going bankrupt right now is what they're thinking about. And it's, it's just unfortunate because I feel like it's an end of an era, right? Like after right. Blockbuster, you had EB games yeah. or GameStop. Um, so then for me, it more begs the question of where now do gamers uh, gather in a physical, where in a physical space will gamers gather? Like one of my mm -hmm. favorite moments, we're lining up for midnight launches at EB games. Yeah. Um, I, you can't do that anymore. I mm -hmm. understand that times are changing, but I met really cool people in those lineups. Mm -hmm. I met really cool fans of gaming at those stores uh, that they're just so passionate about and that are still in my local community to this mm -hmm. day. Um, so I feel like as a community, we kind of have to figure out if there is a physical space, what that looks like. Like, I know there are a bunch of esports bars out there. Is, is that now the thing that kind of substitutes uh, a GameStop or an arcade for a place to, uh, you know, gather for a gamer? Yeah. 
I mean, it's it's a nice kind of alternative. Yeah. yeah. I, I I also hope to see all these like mom and pop shops kind of take over. And yeah. you know, physical uh, you know, collections and physical editions of games, they're already becoming this niche product uh where not everyone uh doesn't want to go digital and everything. I want to see these mom and pop shops kind of replicate to a certain extent what that experience was of going into a GameStop or an EB games perusing through all the uh the discs that they had all the cases i think i think that's a really great niche opportunity for them uh whether or not they can take that opportunity i, I don't know all right um i think x 21 in the chat says i do like being able to go to a physical store to get hardware i like seeing what i'm buying in person compared to buying mm -hmm. controllers and headsets yep. online plus the yeah. process is longer if you buy online and end up needing to return it if it malfunctions yeah. or breaks. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's a great point. It's a great and point. Uh, there are a lot of times, issues you run into. Like how many times, Caboose, Steve, or even Alex, well, I don't know, because I feel like you only play League. But, <laughs> um, times, I was a gamer back in the day, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but like, how many times, Caboose uh, and Steve, like have you guys said, oh, crap, I don't have a copy of this, but I want to create content around it because, you know, my job right now, sure. I'm going to run to a game stop because I know they will have stock of that game. Like yeah. I love mom and pop shops for the community feel, yeah. but – it's just going to be such a weird time. I'm um, not having this, this huge company that is known across North America as that place to go for games. Yeah. But then you're still, you're still going to have Walmart. You're still going to have Best Buy. Yeah. You're still going to, for some people target, target, you know, there's, there's, there's so many other retailers that sell games and, and the physical yep. copies of them and stuff. Whereas GameStop, the thing is that GameStop is specifically for the games, right? And but Walmart, that's what you get other stuff and all that, yeah. right? So, I don't know. Do yeah, we see? Go back, any, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say to go back to your point, Camille. Uh, just a short little anecdote: when Resident Evil Seven came out, like on its launch day, I went to go into my local EB to purchase a copy, and by the time it was, it was like four o'clock in the afternoon. They're like, "Oh, we don't have any copies left." I was like, I was, I was super bummed, obviously. And she, she was trying to be really helpful, and she offered to order uh, more copies and let me know when they came in. But by the time the conversation was over, I was already in my Xbox app, purchased the digital copy, and by the <laughs> time I got home, it was downloaded. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of where I stand with EB Games, where it's just go. becoming a relic of of its time. Like we don't really need yes. it anymore. Yeah, oh, man, I, I need it. I love having my physical copies. I didn't unpack everything, but I have all of my games um, that I don't receive for reviews because like when they send you games for reviews, yeah. you get a digital copy for that. Mm -hmm. But like all of the games that I've purchased, I have my physical copies because I like seeing the artwork. I feel like when we go and purchase something digitally, we're not so intuitive of like paying attention to the cover of these mm -hmm. games. Um, yeah, very true. appreciating all of those uh nuances of like just for sure feeling a game yeah. you know when they got rid of the books in the game like, yeah the manual manual <laughs> that was like heartbreaking <laughs> heartbreaking this, this is another like relationship of physical copies that i'm i'm gonna have to eventually just throw out the door well, you know, and will i survive i don't know but wouldn't you agree that you could still just do that if gamestop shut down like you can get physical copies on Amazon, Walmart, it's not Best the Buy. Same. Plus, what's gonna happen to my points? What's good? wait? What? What are you doing that now? Yeah, I, don't, I don't do I, any I, of that. I, do that. <laughs> I do that because I also buy like um they have really random stuff. So I'm not an online shopper because I'm afraid of the vortex of online shopping. Like if I'm on, uh -huh. on Amazon and then you just find out you have oh crap like five hundred dollars in your cart, you're like oh crap now I need to get rid of like you know four hundred dollars worth of stuff that I really want. Um, so I like going to GameStop because they have like, especially when they've done their like figures and apparels and stuff like cool stuff that I wouldn't see online because I'm not searching for it because I know I'm poor. I will buy at EB Games because it's right there and I could see the quality in my hand. Um, sure. So so I'm going to miss that. When you go to Walmart, you don't get that because, of course, it's not catered to gamers. You get some of that, but not all of that. And the some of it that you see a lot of people have. Um, whereas like 
GameStop, they did like um, these like limited exclusives. So like only like a few thousand release. Right. I like that. But it's yeah. just me thing. It's just me adapting and like old geezers like me adapting to the ways of the world now. Right. Um, yeah. That eventually we'll just have to happen. Eventually we are. Eventually. We'll become digital. Okay. Yeah. We're technically we're digital right now. We're yeah, living in an episode of Black Mirror right very now. soon. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be in an episode of Black Mirror. My thing is when, I don't know if you guys felt this, but when they announced that Reggie fils was joining GameStop, did you guys feel that was like something that could help save the company? Because that's what I thought. No. No. Yeah, no. That was a really? sinking ship. That was yeah. a sinking yeah. ship that he was just taking buckets of water and throwing them over the ocean. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Re Reggie's great. He he's a great business person, uh, spokesperson for brands and everything. But there's no way he could save this ship. Like, it, Caboose, you you said earlier, like this may be the the uh, the straw that breaks the camel's back. I I would counter that. This the straw was there like five years ago once yeah. we started, yeah. started seeing like midnight releases go away. Yeah. Um, a lot a lot of more uh, sales in digital the digital market go. And I, I at this point, I just feel like it's such a niche thing. Yeah. That, that's just not viable anymore yeah oh my god i'm a part of the niche oh but i, I mean it's it's, it's streamers really cool. and again i feel i feel bad like i don't want to yeah, entirely be like uh good riddance you know no, like that's because no. that's that's not my opinion on it because again people are losing their jobs that's not great but and that's the thing too i think a lot mm -hmm. of through the friends i've made through that that were employees of EB Games or are employees of EB Games for them. It just yeah. started off as a summer job or a part-time mm -hmm. job. But yeah. then it opened their eyes because behind the the, the scenes, yes, um, obviously e EB Games or GameStop wasn't like doing the right thing all the time. But they did have certain initiatives that were great for employees where they would send them to E3, send them to events locally to right. learn about the games. And I think that opened the door for a lot of people to figure out how they could get into the gaming industry from just customer service right. um, if they wanted to go that route. So when you see things like this shut down, it kind of now makes it harder for people find, to find those ins. And now makes the community more of a place where we need to help each other out if we're already in the industry uh, be more vocal mm -hmm. on how you could get your start um as we go digitally or as we have these physical spaces closed to give young gamers an open door to the industry that's right. a fantastic point yeah well i think we do have that for sure like you know in twitch um yeah. and just like streaming in general youtube I think um, so. Maybe it's not like so. It's not like all gone. I, I think especially like now, right? With with things like Squad State, uh, yeah, literally like a gathering of gamers, and us right now is a gathering of gamers. So I don't think that is ever going to go away. Uh, but it might increase like the need or the want for things like you know, like this kind of podcast or specific kinds of content. Yeah, for yep. sure. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So. That is it for today's episode of the Squadcast. Of course, if you have any suggestions at home of what we should talk about, well, hit us up on our socials at Squad State, as well as be sure to check out some really cool articles on the website, squadstate.com. Steve, what do you have coming to the website? I've got some uh, articles and guys going up for Marvel's Avengers, because that's my new obsession right nice. now. Yeah. Dope. Uh, they're a big fan. Check them out. <laughs> and Steve, where can people find you personally? Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at S Vigvari. It's a complicated last name, I understand, but just sound it out. You'll get there. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. You'll figure it out. There, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. no C in that, just to no. clarify. <laughs> yeah. uh, Caboose, what do you have coming up this week? Uh, well, we got the PlayStation event this Wednesday, and I'm hoping we're going to see some new stuff from Spider-Man Miles Morales. So yeah. I'll be covering any and uh, anything and everything that's showcased for that game over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash caboose. Still streaming some Avengers and uh, talking about that game and all that fun stuff at twitch.tv slash caboose. And then you can check me out on the socials at Twitter and Instagram at caboose EK. And Alex. Uh, all my socials, Twitter, Instagram, or at Feels Radman. And then I attempt to do daily streams at twitch.tv slash radpuppy. And then I do my squad stage streams on Saturday and Sundays from 11 to 3 p.m. PST, though. 
I always forget what time it is for yeah, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I think we worked it out last time to two to six. Oh, yes. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you're grinding that league, right? Still ranking oh, up? Oh, yes. Yeah. Still working on that. It's definitely... <laughs> definitely a journey <laughs> of course and uh, everyone can find me at this is camco twitter instagram youtube all that stuff i'm looking forward to the playstation news got to be covering that um hopefully some teasers to some of their exclusives maybe and then of course i'm streaming right here tomorrow and wednesday i'll be streaming avengers so that just fits nice. everything yeah, Dope. so I'm excited for that. But until uh, next time, thank you guys so much for watching at home. We will see you. Peace.